If you're watching content online, you have most likely already been consuming AI-generated products, either AI-generated images of what your children will be, a Homer Simpsons version of Teenage Dirtbag, or perhaps you just asked Siri what time it is. Just for the chaos I would see in the comments, let's just pretend that that is all AI is. <laughs> We have talked about tech and crypto and data storage and the impact of the internet several times on this platform. Not only because tech is something that tremendously impacts our lives every single day, but tech is also constantly evolving and improving and developing. As such, looking at the tools that we use every single day is an important factor in sustainability. And I've been wanting to talk about AI for a hot while, and now I'm finally ready to sit down and share some thoughts with you. So, without further ado, this is the impact of AI. AI in all its forms are used for a lot more than generating funny filters. AI technologies are being used to predict the stock market. Applications like Google Maps and Uber use AI to analyze data in real time in order to provide the most efficient routes, traffic conditions, and estimated arrival times. AI also play an important role in national and global security systems and provide algorithms that can diagnose cancer at an early stage. Needless to say, it's a vastly used and vastly important tool. In January 2024, the International Energy Agency, or IEA, issued a forecast for global energy use over the next two years. And for the first time, these predictions also included the impact of data centers, cryptocurrency, and artificial intelligence. The IEA estimated that these components added together consume about 2% of global energy use. In 2022, they also estimated that that amount were to double by 2026, which would mean that data storage, artificial intelligence, and cryptocurrency would consume the same amount of energy globally as Japan. How does that work exactly? Let me explain. A data center is what makes you being online possible. Everything you consume online, including this video, is data that's stored somewhere. It doesn't just exist in the cloud. The cloud is a very physical place, or to be more precise, it's thousands of physical places. And our actions online, our tools, our programs, our music, our documents, our movies, are all data that you then gain access to via your internet connection. But they're all stored somewhere many places. And storing data requires energy. A data center heats up when processing, just like your laptop can get warm and overheat. And to keep the data centers from overheating and thus shutting down the internet, they're constantly cooled down. And this requires energy, like any other cooling system. And that energy has typically been coming from fossil fuels. And that's where the majority of the impact of the internet comes from. Studies from the IEA show that data centers account for about 3.5% of global greenhouse gas emissions, which is more than the aviation industry. This means that the internet emits more CO2 than airplanes. And apart from greenhouse gas emissions, there are also two other types of impact that we need to talk about when talking about data storage, the internet, and everything that comes with it. It's water and production of products. When data centers are cooled down using liquid instead of air, it uses insane amounts of water. And often data centers are placed in places that are prone to drought, so that's a great combination as well. Data centers can use up to 5 million gallons of water every single day. The lifespan of equipment also has an impact because tech is moving by incredibly fast and equipment gets worn down when constantly in use. So data centers replace their equipment extremely quickly. This increases e-waste, which is rarely disposed of properly and is also one of the largest growing categories of waste today, which pollutes water, air, and is extremely dangerous for humans to handle. Furthermore, the production of new tech requires vast amounts of minerals and materials and precious metals, which all have to be mined and produced. And I have talked about these issues many times on this channel so I'll link all the other videos down below where we talk about the impact of technology and our appliances because all these points that apply to kitchen appliances or our phones or our laptops also apply to data centers. And here we're talking soil erosion and child labor and exploitation of natural resources and loss of natural habitat. And let's not forget how Western tech companies are exploiting the global south where the mines are that they're typically operating. So the existence of the internet has an impact like everything else that we do. And that's why it's important to talk about and not take for granted. Because when it has an impact, it also means that that impact can be 
improved. Today, simply storing 100 gigabyte of data in the cloud, which is not very uncommon, actually it's extremely common, can generate up to 200 kilograms of CO2 equivalent every single year. But I think we should talk about why programs like generative AI have a bigger impact than a simple Google search or an Instagram post. GBT in chat GBT stands for generative pre-trained transfer, and it uses specialized algorithms to find patterns and sequences across the internet to match your search. This is called generative AI, and these programs are trained to generate responses and results based on the data input it's given, which is typically a lot. When you ask ChatGPT to finish a paper or to generate a recipe, it goes through all the data that it's trained in, all the data input. This type of generative AI is limited. It only knows what you put in, and then it generates responses based on that data. This means that ChatGPT won't give you a recipe that already exists on the internet. Most likely, it will generate a unique recipe based on different mixes of data that it knows. Processes of training the AI and generating the responses require vast amounts of energy. To put it simply, a ChatGPT search requires 10 times more energy than a simple Google search. Training a large language model like ChatGPT uses nearly 1,300 megawatt hours of electricity, which is the annual consumption of about 130 US homes. According to the IEA, a single Google search takes 0.3 watt hours of electricity, while a ChatGPT request takes 2.9 watt hours. And if ChatGPT were integrated into the 9 billion searches done every single day, the IEA says the electricity demand demand could increase by 10 terawatt hours a year, which is roughly the same amount consumed as 1.5 million European citizens. And this study looked at Bloom, a 176 billion parameter language model across its life cycle, and it had this to conclude. Bloom's final training emitted approximately 24.7 tons of CO2 equivalent if we consider only the dynamic power consumption, and 50.5 tons if we account for all the processes ranging from equipment manufacturing to energy-based operational consumption. So it's not just using AI tools that require all this energy, it's training them as well. We, and by we I mean not just consumers, but also companies that definitely use these to make money, but that's a whole other story. Anyway, we want bigger and better AI models that can do more and more advanced tasks. And those don't just appear out of thin air, they have to be trained. This means that in order for a program to create algorithms or write recipes or write poems or finish your homework, they have to go through as much data as possible as many times as possible in order to memorize it. Does that make sense? This means that these programs are running for thousands and thousands of hours, going through thousands of GPUs, which are the chips that make generative AI possible. Anyway, just go with it. And because we want better and better tools and better and better programs that can do this, we use more and more energy to constantly achieve this in new generations of AI. And although we're seeing more and more companies that use renewable green energy, we're also seeing products and programs that require more and more energy. So in many ways, we're simply just back where we started in terms of how much energy we require and where that energy comes from. So we have some energy that comes from green sources, but that doesn't really matter because we need more and more energy and that energy has to come from a steady supply. So we also keep using fossil fuel energy to sort of make that. Does that make sense? A lot of experts are criticizing that even though we're introducing more and more green energy, we also need more and more energy. To sort of put this into perspective, Mark Zuckerberg placed an order for 350,000 GPUs from NVIDIA with a street price around $10 billion. That single order was the equivalent of the whole revenue for the company in 2020. Microsoft is also buying thousands and thousands of GPUs in order to advance their AI solutions. And look at that, now we're back to exploiting natural materials, drawing precious metals from the earth, creating products, generating e-waste. So what's the solution? If data centers were to switch from fossil fuel derived energy onto a green renewable energy source, a lot of the AI related issues could be improved but not resolved. So you might want to hold off on champagne because we need a lot more renewable energy to make up for the increased energy consumption of AI. One thing that could make a tremendous difference in this field would be more transparency because some learning models for AI are more energy intensive than others. Different models and algorithms can use 30 to 40 times more energy than others while generating the same result. So because generative AI is definitely here to stay, I think it's only fair that consumers and companies using these services are able to track their activities and how much energy it requires, just like with our own energy bill. Because this information does exist, it's just not available to consumers or generally users of these services. The best organizations in place to share this information would be the providers of the services like OpenAI, Microsoft, 
meta, but they're simply not making this information available to consumers. Moreover, transparency is a huge issue in general, not only when it comes to energy consumption. Often AI tools become black boxes where there is an input and there is an output, but you really have no idea what's happening on the inside. Essentially, when we don't know what data was used to train the models, we don't know how these models came to the conclusions and the results that they're then generating, which means that they can be very hard to trust or use as credible sources. I would not use them as credible sources. Ever. This lack of transparency also creates a whole new issue of privacy for consumers. Because we don't know if the pictures we post on our social media pages are used to train AI. We might not be okay with that if we use any Adobe products. Our content, our videos, our images, our text is also used to train the AI models. And we might not be okay with that. It also creates a whole other issue of copyright infringement when artist works are being used to train AI models so they can generate similar works. But that's a whole other can of worms I really don't want to get into because I also definitely have thoughts and feelings in that regard. Right now we're in the middle of an AI summer, which means that we're really focusing on it, we're hyping it up, many people are using it for different purposes, even when it doesn't make sense, because it's trending. The way I see it, we really shouldn't be leaving all the processing to AI generative tools or chat GPT like programs. While these tools might be able to write a script for a YouTube video or finish your homework for you, we really should be talking about whether or not it's necessary and more importantly, what happens when we let it. I have talked to so many people that do not understand why I spent weeks researching a subject for a YouTube video, why I do all the reading, all the researching, all the taking notes, all the thinking about this topic when I could just pop a prompt into chat GPT and that will give me a script for a YouTube video in a matter of seconds. But in my own opinion, there's a really good reason for why I'm not doing that and why I never will. Because it's easy to rely too much on AI tools when we first start to use them and it's easy for them to take over more and more of our daily tasks. But we should remember that AI programs are limited because real changes might occur in the real world that isn't synced up with the data that's used to train the AI, which means that you might end up saying something that's outdated or simply just wrong without even knowing it if you rely too much on AI tools to create your work, your, your whatever you're doing, your YouTube scripts, your homework, your article, your paper, whatever. Personally, I want to learn and understand. I don't want to recite. I personally don't get anything from just reading out loud an AI-generated text. I also think it's important to be critical of our sources, thinking about the nuances of who's saying something and why they're saying it and on what platform they're saying it. And all these nuances are often lost when using AI. There are also several instances of ChatGPT generating sources that aren't even real. And researching while time-consuming also develops cognitive skills, concentration, critical thinking, as well as patience and maintaining maintains your academic curiosity. While generative AI and chat GPT have many very, very nifty practical applications, we should still think about and reflect upon how and why we're using them. And instead of trying to symptomatically fix issues here and there, they should be building programs with sustainability built in from the beginning. I have no doubt that there will be a lot more to talk about when it comes to AI, so consider this a first video of probably several. And I would love to hear you guys' take down below. So let me know if you have ever used AI, ChatGPT, how and why you're using them, or if you have any reflections regarding why and how. And if you like this video, consider subscribing. That would make my day. I talk about all things sustainability, not only deep dives into environmental impact. So if you're interested in any other parts of how you live sustainably, this is the place to be. Thank you so much for watching. Have an amazing day. And I will see you guys next time. Take really good care of yourselves. Until then, bye. Thank you so much for watching this video and also a special thank you to my Patreon supporters. You guys help me create green zero waste contents and I love you guys. You can find the links to my social media accounts down below and the link to my Patreon on this screen. Bye!